For over the last six months, I've been using ChatGPT to accelerate and massively expand my capabilities while scripting. Today, I'm going to be covering from how ChatGPT can be used by beginning developers while learning and progressing during their scripting journey, to how I use it on an everyday basis to solve a magnitude of issues. Now, for any of those who are unaware, what is ChatGPT? Well, I like to think of ChatGPT as my virtual assistant, which has knowledge on literally every single topic in the entire world. Now, this assistant is relatively easy to work with. For instance, I can literally say to it, I'm trying to script the GUI in Roblox, but I keep receiving the following error. Then from Roblox, I just copy and paste my error directly, and then I also include my script as well, or any of the code related to that specific error. Now, once I do that, ChatGPT actually explains the error to me and makes it really easy to understand. In addition to that, it also gives me a couple of different things that I can check to see where this error is coming from. Now, that's just one of the ways that ChatGPT can be used, and we're going to be going over a bunch more in just a second. But the first topic that I want to cover is how to talk to ChatGPT. Whenever we want to communicate with ChatGPT, what we are doing is we are typing out a prompt. So the message that we write inside of the send a message box is generally referred to as a prompt. So when we send our message, ChatGPT will interpret this prompt and then attempt to do what we've instructed it. Now, communicating with ChatGPT by putting your thoughts in a text which the computer can accurately process is a skill in itself. Although, if you think of yourself as good at Googling, then you've been building a similar skill this entire time. Imagine every single time that you try to put your thoughts into text when searching for something on Google, and when it comes to ChatGPT, you just have to refine that skill a little bit. Now, if you want some more tips on how to communicate better with ChatGPT, I would recommend researching how to create better ChatGPT prompts, and you'll find a bunch of resources there. But what I'm gonna do is give you a couple of quick, basic, fundamental tips to quickly improve how you communicate with ChatGPT. When writing our prompts, we wanna make sure that we explain exactly what we we want to achieve and be very specific. So now I've just created a prompt and this prompt says, can you fix the errors in this Lua U script that I've created for my Roblox game? Question mark. And of course, after that question mark, I would actually include my code here, but this is just for an example. Now, when I say fix the errors, that's the specific action that I'm wanting to achieve. In addition to being specific, I'm also providing context when I say Roblox game as well, because these details are very important and very specific to let ChatGPT know exactly what we're working on. In addition to providing context, we should also use specific keywords so once again, using the Louis U keyword, also using Roblox, and even game could be a keyword as well. And along with all of those tips, make sure that you include your full on error. You can literally just copy and paste the error directly into here. And you can also copy and paste your code inside of here as well. And ChatGPT will be able to understand all of that. Here's an example of how I would do this. You might think that including your error here with a bunch of random text might make ChatGPT not be able to understand where your script is, but GPT is much smarter than that and will easily be able to figure out where your script is and where your error is. Now, let's go ahead and start looking at all the different use cases that we have for ChatGPT. Our first use case is correcting code. Now, inside of our Discord, a lot of people come here and ask questions about different issues that they have while following my tutorials. Now, what I did was take some of their issues and see if ChatGPT could fix them. Now, in addition to the chat log that I showed you earlier in the video, this is the second issue that we've had ChatGPT fix. So, I said to ChatGPT, I'm trying to script the GUI in Roblox, but I keep receiving the following error. I then pasted the user's error, which was mouse button one click is not a valid member of image label. So now if you've been scripting, you probably already know what this error means, but this user was trying to listen for the mouse button one click event on an image label when you cannot listen for that on an image label, you can only listen for that event on a button like a text button or an image button. And then I also included the part of the script that they included as well. Now, in my opinion, I would have included a lot more of this script, but that's all that they had. So this is all I could provide it with, but the response was actually pretty nice here. So at first it explains the error by saying the error message indicates that mouse button one click is not a valid member of the image label and Roblox only GUI elements of the type text button or image bun have the mouse bun one click event. That's a great explanation. And then it goes on to say that the image that you're currently trying to use right now, if that's of the image label type, then you cannot connect that event to it. And then it tells us to change that to an image bun. Now it also gives us a second method on how to do this as well, which would actually be using the input began event on the image label. And this is not a solution that I would suggest to other people because this is obviously not what the user meant. So I don't like that this was suggested, but to be fair, that is an interesting example. Now the next issue that we took from the discord was actually somebody having an issue setting up their player data. So I said that I'm creating a Roblox game, but received the following errors. And then I pasted in the error that the user sent, which the first one is that in their data script inside of the server script service, there's an attempt to index nil with user ID. Then they also had an error here too, which was about a failed asset download. And then we also have another error saying data store can't be accessed from the client. So this person was having a couple of different issues. And to my surprise, ChatGPT handled this very well. Now, in addition to their error, I also pasted their code, which they copy and pasted directly from their entire 
entire script, so I included all of that there. And now, like I said, this response was actually really, really well. First of all, ignore this part because ChatGPT has some knowledge about me, but it begins by explaining the errors. So it actually corrects a typo that the user made on this line. It then explains to the user what the downloading asset failed error is from. It then explains the argument to missing or nil error, which I'm not exactly even sure where that resulted from. But then it also explains data source can't be accessed from the client. And it seems, and I'm assuming that the user created this script on the client side when they should have created this on the server side. So it explains that data source can only be accessed from server side scripts. And that should be enough information for even a new user User to know, oh, I should be making this in the server script service inside of a server script and not a local script and stuff like that. Now, in addition to all that, GPT also pointed out a bunch of issues in this user script. Now, just to make it a little bit more clear for you to see exactly what those issues are, let's go ahead and open up the script in Studio. You can ignore all of these because we just don't have those scripts inside of here, but we can see one clear issue here. When this user was creating the leader stats, they used the wrong player variable, which refers to an unknown global currently. Then when they were creating the load profile function, they also made a typo here and used the lowercase p when they should have used the uppercase p to represent the player type. And now that we've updated that type, we can also see a bunch of other typos made, such as kick being in all lowercase when it should actually start with the capital letter. And then when they try to use the player user ID, they also made a typo there as well. And the mistakes go on, like right here, the function calls incorrect, but I'm showing all that to you so that you can easily see what it looked like before and now what it looks like after. All of those errors have been automatically fixed by GPT and the user just came here to fix one single issue. So I was really impressed by that response. Now, in addition to fixing bugs, we'll briefly touch on a couple of different cases where I also use ChatGPT as well. So the first chat that we're going to bring up is actually when I was using ChatGPT for creating alternative logic for an existing function. So basically, I was working on my clicking simulator series and I was creating the get max rebirth function. Now, what this would do is it would take into account the amount of clicks that the player had and then it would calculate the maximum amount of times that the player can afford to rebirth. Now, currently, we can see that my function is actually using a while loop. And the way that this is set up because of our while loop, this will actually eventually cause the game to crash. The reason for that is because in a clicker game, generally, the players can reach absurdly high numbers, like hundreds of millions up to billions, trillions, and so on. Now, imagine doing a million iterations. If you don't know, that's a ton, and that's most likely going to cause the client to crash. So what I did was ask ChatGPT to give me an alternative solution without using any loops, and then I also provided another function which it might need to actually come up with a solution for this function. Now, let me just tell you, me and ChatGPT had a very, very long conversation. First of all, ChatGPT sent me some crazy math that I don't even understand, okay? My knowledge level of math is clearly not this great. If you guys understand what this is, hey, you're big brain. I'm small brain when it comes to math. But this conversation was extremely long, extremely long. Eventually though, we actually got to a solution and it was all good. But yes, I had to work for a very long time with ChatGPT and really tune this out and fix some different issues and stuff like that. But eventually we did get a working solution. Now, another thing that ChatGPT is amazing for is creating systems. So during this chat, I was working on a clicking simulator game and I was actually trying to improve my pet inventory GUI to sort pets in a very specific layout order. Now, I was specifically trying to handle all this logic inside of one single function without storing or relying on the position of other pets. Now, I felt like this would be completely possible, but I had no idea what math we would need to do to actually achieve that. And I will admit, it did take a little bit of time chatting back and forth, but eventually we did come to a solution which did work, and I was very satisfied with the answer. Now, another use case is optimizing and improving your pre-existing code. When first creating a new system, I generally find myself writing fast and sloppy code to build it out. Once I've worked out all of the edge cases I can think of, I'll then clean up this code. Instead of cleaning it up myself though, I now can just pass it along to ChatGPT and I can often get returned an even more optimized result than I would have come up by myself. Now, with the example that I'm showing you, I'm actually kind of disappointed with ChatGPT's results here. So my prompt was, could you optimize and improve this code? It should follow Roblox's low EU style. I then provided it some code. And then looking at the script that we got returned back to us, if we look at the player service variable, realistically, we would want this to be Pasco case. And I feel like 99% of people call this variable players, not player service but that's not a big deal. I'm just more off put by the wrong casing. But then we can see it did condense all of those connections into a single one. And obviously this was a very, very basic example of how it can optimize your code. But I'm telling you, even if you write out a very big script with like over 200 lines of code, you could copy and paste all of that inside of here. And most likely some of your code will get improved in some way. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, I've also left the link down below in the description to where I wrote up an entire article on this video as well. Inside of there, you can even find links to the full on conversations that I had with 
with ChatGPT if you're interested to see the type of dialogue that I use while communicating with it. And with that being said, let me know in the comment section down below. Have you guys been using ChatGPT? Are you going to start using it now? What are your thoughts on it? I love it a ton. It enables me to do so much more and so many more complex things as well. So I'm a huge fan of it and I can't wait to continue to watch it grow because I think it's just going to continue to get better and better over time. Anyways, let me know what your guys' thoughts are in the comment section down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.